Hello, my name is Dr. Diala Setier. I'm a third-year cardiology fellow at Cornell, and I'm joined by Dr. Rachel Lampert, a professor of medicine and electrophysiologist at Yale. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Lampert. Um, I'd like to start by asking, what was the motivation behind the Live HCM trial? Well, first of all, thanks so much for the invitation to be here and for your interest in Live HCM. So, as we all know, exercise has uh, myriad benefits, both psychological and physical, really for all of us. But there have been uh, many conditions, many types of cardiac populations for whom there has been concern that exercise could perhaps precipitate sudden cardiac death. And so those populations have traditionally been uh, uh, restricted from, vigorous, uh, from uh, competitive sports and even many from vigorous exercise. So uh, we had some preliminary data suggesting that uh, for the population with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, um, it may be that vigorous exercise uh, was not as dangerous as has been supposed. And we, we knew that uh, many patients with HCM were out there doing different things. So uh, what we decided to do for Live HCM was uh, try to identify and recruit individuals at all levels of exercise, uh, those who were more vigorous as well as those who were moderately exercising and those who were more sedentary, uh, and follow them prospectively over three years to really identify whether vigorous exercise was a risk for ventricular arrhythmias uh, and uh, adverse outcomes. Thank you. And Dr. Lampert, can you share with us what were the main findings of the trial? So we enrolled uh, overall, there were 1660 uh, patients with HC, or individuals really with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy who uh, participated uh, as far as at least one uh, follow-up. Um, we followed them prospectively for three years. We surveyed them about every six months and, uh, to determine whether there were any uh, arrhythmic outcomes. And then we got their records so that we could confirm what they were. And what we found was that uh, overall the event rate was low. Our endpoints were a composite of death, cardiac arrest, uh, ventricular arrhythmia is treated with an ICD, or syncope judged to be uh, potentially arrhythmic by our events committee. Overall, the event rate was low. Uh, it was less than 5%, which is uh, obviously good news for that population. Uh, and what we found was that those who were exercising vigorously did not have uh, a higher rate of arrhythmic endpoints uh, than those who were exercising vigorously, uh, than those who were more, uh, who were less active. Um, so it was overall, it was 15.3 a, a events per thousand uh, patient years in um, uh, the the uh, uh, non-exercisers versus 15.9 per thousand years uh, per thousand patient years in the exercisers, giving us a hazard ratio of 1.01, which is you know pretty close to unity. Um, we had uh, set it up as a non-inferiority trial, and in the entire population, um, basically the, 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 the way you think about non-inferiority is you set a, a boundary in advance uh, and, uh, uh, that, um, for the confidence intervals. And we found that um, the, uh, the, the, the upper bound did not cross our pre-specified boundary of 1.5 times for a hazard ratio. So we were able to say that uh, exercise uh, is non-inferiority, non-inferior to non-exercise, basically. I mean, it's, it's very interesting because I think a lot of us think of vigorous activity in HCM and we worry. Um, so to that point, how do you think the results of this trial may impact our care for these kinds of patients in the future? Well, so I think it, it will... Uh, uh, it could potentially have a significant impact. Um, we know some patients are out there exercising anyway. That's why, how we were able to enroll them. But I think um, many of them reported, even the ones who were exercising vigorously, that they had been restricted by their physicians. And so I think what this really will allow us is, to, uh, is for patients and physicians to look at this data and really make a much more informed decision in a shared decision-making framework about what level of exercise they want to do. Now, one thing that I do want to point out about our study and sort of the implications moving forward is that the majority, the, the very large majority of patients in our study were followed at high volume HCM centers by real experts in hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. They were appropriately risk assessed, they were appropriately treated. And so I think it's really an important caveat that in that setting, um, we found that exercise did not increase risk. Um, so it's, it's very important that patients have these conversations with ex real experts in HCM. Thank you so much, Dr. Lampert, for joining us and sharing the findings of your study. Um, and for all of you watching, if you'd like more content, please be sure to follow us at Fits at the, on the Go um, and our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Fits on the Go. Thank you.